In this video, we will learn about bubble sort. Bubble sort is a simple comparison based algorithm in which each pair of adjacent elements are compared and swapped if they are in wrong order. The time complexity of bubble sort in the best case is big of n that is when the array is already sorted and in the average and worst case the complexity is big of n square with the space complexity of big of 1. So let's see how bubble sort works. Suppose we are given an array which has n number of elements and the variable k represents the pass number where the range of k is from 1 to n minus 1. So for every pass of bubble sort, we will compare the adjacent elements starting from the index 0 till the index n minus k. That is, in every pass, we will make n minus k comparisons. And in each comparison, if the element on the left is greater than the element on the right, we will swap them. Else, we will move on to the next pair. And we will observe that at the end of each pass, the greatest element will be at its sorted position. And we will repeat this process until our array is sorted. So let's take an example and see how bubble sort works. Suppose this is the array given to us with 5 elements. Therefore the value of n would be 5. And in the first pass that is k equal to 1, we have to make n minus k comparisons which would be 5 minus 1 that is 4. That is, we have to compare adjacent elements from index 0 to index 4. So let's start by comparing the first two elements. And as the element on the left, that is 4, is greater than the element on the right, which is 2, we will swap them, that is, 2 will now be at index 0 and 4 would now be at index 1. Next, we will move on to the next pair of elements, that is, at index 1 and index 2. And as the element on the left, which is 4, is smaller than the element on the right, that is 5, there would be no swapping in this case. So we will move on to the next pair of elements. And now again 5 is greater than 1, so we will swap both the elements. And 1 will now be at index 2, and 5 will now be at index 3. Now moving on to the last pair of elements. Again 5 is greater than 3, so we will swap them. And the element 3 will now be at index 3 and the element 5 would now be at index 4. Now we have completed our first pass at the end of which the element 5 is at its sorted position that is at the end of the array because it is the greatest element in the array. So we will move on to the next pass that is k is equal to 2 and n minus k would be 3 therefore we will make 3 comparisons in this pass from index 0 to index 3. So let's compare the first pair of elements. Now as 2 is smaller than 4, there would be no swapping and we will move on to the next pair of elements. And now the element on the left which is 4 is greater than 1, so we will swap them and move on to the next pair of elements. And again 4 is greater than 3, so we will again perform swapping. And this would be the end of our second pass at the end of which the element 4 is at its sorted position. Now moving forward in the third pass, n minus k would be 2. So we will make two comparisons that is from index 0 to index 2. So comparing the first two elements as 2 is greater than 1, we will swap them and move on to the next pair of elements. And as 2 is smaller than 3, there would be no swapping. Now moving on to the last pass, the value of k would be 4 and n minus k would be 1. Therefore, we only need to perform one comparison between the first two elements. And if we compare them, we see that the elements are already at their sorted positions. So there would be no swapping in this case. And we have successfully sorted our array. Now one thing we can improve in this is at the end of each pass, we can check if the array is sorted. Then we don't need to perform any further passes. And we can do that by checking if the swap operation is taking place in the pass or not. Because if there are no swap operations, that would mean the array is already sorted. And in the entire process, if we observe, we are using two nested loops where the outer loop is for the passes which runs from k equal to 1 to k less than n and the inner loop which is for comparison of elements runs n minus k times. So now let's implement this using C++. Firstly, we start our bubble sort function which takes in as argument an array A which has n number of elements. Next, we declare our variables k, i, temp and flag where at the end of each pass we will use the flag variable to check if the array is already sorted and we will use the temp variable for swapping. 
So next we start our outer loop which runs from k equal to 1 to k less than n and firstly in this loop we will make flag equal to 0 and next we will start our inner loop which will run from i equal to 0 to i less than n minus k to perform n minus k comparisons and inside this loop we will check if the element on the left hand side is greater than the element on the right hand side. We will perform our swapping operation and we will assign the value of the left side element to the variable tim and we will store the value of the element on the right hand side in ai and finally we will put the value of temp in ai plus 1 and if in any pass we are performing the swapping operation we will set the flag as 1 which would mean that the array is not sorted as we are performing the swapping operation and this would be the end of our inner loop now before closing the outer loop we will check if the value of flag is 0 which would mean that there was no swap operation performed and the array is already sorted Therefore, if the flag is equal to 0, we can simply break out of the loop. Otherwise, we will repeat the process until we get a sorted array. So that was all for this video. Thank you for watching.